Okay, this is um, homework problem set out of chapter 6, page 146, number 23. This is the diver hitting the water. And we're trying to do two things here, velocity that the di uh, diver hits the water and then the force the water exerts on the diver to bring him to a stop. Okay, this is a fantastic problem because it involves uh, the kinematics and the forces, and it blends the two concepts very nicely together. And so you'll probably see this problem again um, on a review and on a test, hint, hint. So pay attention. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at this problem, and we really have two kinematics problems going on. Okay, so we have the first one. It's a free fall problem. V initial equals zero. I'm going to accelerate at negative uh, 9.81 meters per second squared until I hit the water. Okay, and we've done this type of problem before. And then we have another problem, and it's also a kinematics problem. Okay, so I've got this V initial, which is the velocity I hit the water at. And then the velocity decreases until zero. Vector dance tells me that means the acceleration is going the other way. Okay, let's look at this first part in a little bit more detail. Okay, now using equation number five here, I can plug in my knowns and I can calculate my velocity at impact. Make sure you put the negative sign on your displacement. All right, now this velocity at impact, then I'm going to use for the next part of the kinematics, and that is where I'm going to plug it in here to calculate then the acceleration that it's going to take to slow from the impact velocity to zero over a distance of two meters. Okay, now this acceleration that I calculated that is what we're going to use in Newton's second law. We cannot have an acceleration without a net force greater than zero. Okay, so now let's look at Newton's second law. And here's what we think we know. We know the mass. We just calculated the acceleration. Now, where do we go from here? Well, we better do a good free body diagram. When we do our free body diagram, this is what we know for sure. We know that it's accelerating in an upward direction. We know that I must have an F net in the upward direction. And this is the free body diagram that most students do. They say, well, okay, yeah, I've got this force of water acting up to stop the diver, and I can just plug and chug that into Newton's second law, and I'm good to go. And that's wrong. The reason it's wrong is because, remember, it is F net equals mass times acceleration. Now, if water was the only thing acting on the diver, then this would be correct. But let's go back to our free body diagram and fix it. I have another force acting on the diver. It is the force of gravity. His weight is always going to be present. Notice that I drew his weight, the force of gravity, smaller than the force of the water, so F net is still pointed upward. Now I'm ready to go into Newton's second law and do it properly. So I have two forces I must account for in Newton's second law. I've got the force of the water acting up. I've got the weight acting down. I can solve this for the force of water and now I'm good to go, and I have shown our dominance over this problem.